today I sort of say goodbye to an old friend, although I'm fairly certain this computer is cursed, but we'll get into that at the end of the video because it's kind of a long story, so I'll leave that for the end. I'm going to be replacing my lovely main computer with my, my main computer but in a different case, so I'm not really changing any of the computer stuff in it power supply, motherboard, all that stuff's the same. I'm just gonna be changing the hardline water tubing to uh, soft tubing to make it a little easier for me to get around in there. Because right now, if I wanna do anything with this computer, I have to drain the loop, remove the video card. If I wanna replace the RAM, I have to take out <laughs> all of the fans, the radiator, several more pipes, and then put it all back together, check it for leaks fill it back up and it's a nightmare. This thing started off beautiful. It was my work of art showcase PC is the first hardline tube system I ever did. I think it turned out really well considering it was my first time and that uh, what I wanted was like a really like densely packed build. So I did everything I could to just maximize the size of the rads, pipes everywhere. Like I wanted it to look just like full of computer stuff. This fitting is literally pressed up against this fan. And then this fan, or sorry, the rad is pressed up against the, the fan at the back. Like there is no room. If this was like a millimeter wider, it would not work. I have a big uh, 280 millimeter, 55 millimeter thick rad at the front, 360 at the top, same 55 millimeter thickness. Uh, your standard D5 pump. As for hardware, I have an EVGA 2080 Ti Hydro Copper uh, for the Win 3. The motherboard is an ASRock X299 Professional Gaming Plus X something. I can't remember, but it's an ASRock board. It's actually pretty nice, uh, even though it was like a moderately priced one, uh, 10 gig NIC, that kind of stuff. I've got some Corsair RAM. I got lots of Corsair stuff in here. I've made some changes over the years, so it's no longer as pretty as it was when it was originally built. I mean, now I've got this like kind of ugly flow meter, but I do actually really like flow meters, so I'll probably put that in the case again. I got Corsair ML fans on everything. ML fans don't look very good. They have like RGB, but they're like lame RGB. It's only four lights per fan, but they're the ML fans are really the only fans I consider to be up there with Noctua branded fans and you know I wanted the RGB and the nice look so I went with that. Due to changes in the new case I'm actually gonna have to change some of the fans and the RGB elites are now the new one. Yeah the fans aren't gonna match so the OCD people are gonna be not happy with this but it'll still be good. I'm building, I'm rebuilding this thing for convenience and to still make it a good computer as opposed to making it a beautiful showcase PC, although some stuff admittedly will be purely aesthetic. So the case is a fractal design, I think it's the R6, I always get all the different models confused, it's either the R5 or the R6, and yeah, this is a good case, but it's kind of an older design in that it's pretty low airflow and it's designed to be noise damping, although in reality I think noise damping cases are kind of pointless because you have to run the fans faster to keep them cool so it ends up just making noise like why not just get an airflow case and then just have it running the fans slower I mean that's what I'm doing I'm, I'm going with the O11 dynamic Evo the brand new one yes I know every single computer is an O11 dynamic but you know it's a good case and everyone uses it for a reason because it's a good case. So <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ditch this. Uh, I have to make a few changes with the actual system. Like I said, the, the hardware is all the same. I forgot to mention it's a 7980 XE 18 core, which is so out of date now and ridiculously expensive when I bought it and like worthless now. I can't put the 280 mil rad into the new case with an upright GPU, which we'll get to. So I'm gonna have to replace that with another 360, which is why I have new fans. I'm Like I said, I'm gonna put in soft tubing. So I'll get into that when we start doing the build. I, I mostly want it for convenience so I can actually install a card. I can't even install a card in this thing. I have to drain the loop. I mean, I get that it looks cool, especially when it's powered up. I think most people, the second build is a lot more practical than the first over the top computer build. Got all the parts here, I think. So I should be able to do it. I'll just go over like how messed you just wait till you see the back of this thing. Oh god, over the years. I built this a few years ago and oh my god. The back of the case 
and the cable management is something to behold. Be prepared. And yeah, the power button on this thing broke, so I had to like drill in a new button. The um, front panel I.O. is basically dead. The USB 3 ports provide power, but no USB interface. So I, it's all it's all just dying in this case. So yeah, I have good reason to swap it out. The back panel is already popping off, so that should tell you. Of course, as soon as I turn it around and see the nice white case, I see the big speck of dirt that was on the lens. So I cleaned that and I'm not going to reshoot the first part because I, I, I don't want to. It's, uh, it's too much work for me. Anyway, here comes the horror show. Originally, I had one hard drive in this. Then I decided I'm going to do a raid of two drives just for a little bit of redundancy. I don't really store much on my actual computer. It's mostly on my TrueNAS server. I'll put in two 8s instead of the 12. And I kind of had to move some stuff around. And there's not much room back here. So be prepared. Uh, so I used to have this Corsair Commander up here and... I had to install these little fans because this is all I had room for. I just did this recently and immediately this hard drive got up to like 50 degrees Celsius because there's no airflow back here. And I was just like, okay, so where can I put a fan? And I was like trying to MacGyver something in and of course there's nowhere. So I just put in these random knock to a fans that are like just moving air nowhere. Well, my first video using my a7 IV and of course a few minutes in I get the high temperature warning because I forgot to turn off the shut off as soon as it gets moderately warm alarm. So yeah, I've crammed a whole bunch of crap back here and I mean I have a huge power supply under here. I have the AX1600i because I was by building a crazy ass computer so I bought the most crazy ass power supply for no real reason and yeah it's a nightmare back here so I'm going to be very pleased when I get rid of all of this so I think the next step I'm not even gonna film it because it's gonna be real boring I'm gonna disassemble everything in here get all the parts out that I can before the water cooling loop then I'm gonna take the water cooling loop and flush it with some, you know, if I have any like cis prep or whatever, and then I'll flush it again with some distilled water to get it as clean as possible. Then I'll take the loop apart, get rid of all the hard line tubing and start replacing it with other stuff. So I'm sure a lot of people are already familiar with the O11 Dynamic Evo. I'm just gonna go over it a little bit because, you know, someone might not have seen it. The 11 Dynamic series is a really great series of cases that DeBauer has had a lot to do with and they're made by Lee and Lee but he's had a lot of input on them and they've kind of been revised over the years with various different versions. Uh, this is the newest one I believe, the Evo. And before that there was also an XT which was like a giant one and there was also a mini version. But this one's pretty big. Uh, it's got tempered glass on two sides which I've taken off because you know I'm building in it. So it uses like an L-shaped cooling pattern in general where you pull air through your radiator and out the side or the, uh, the back and there's also venting at the top and bottom. I'm going to set it up for a chimney style where I'm going to have a 360 on the bottom, 360 on the top and just pull air through. I'm going to try and put in two 140s behind the graphics card because this, this particular case does have an optional component which lets you put in a video card upright here and then run a cable over to the motherboard. So I'm gonna do that and see if I can get fans in there. You're, you're supposed to swap out this back plate with one that holds hard drives, but I'm not gonna use that. So I'm gonna just try and wing it with that one and hope I can get a little bit more cooling and a little bit more pointless RGB. The main chamber, you know, of the motherboard here, and uh, I haven't really decided where I'm gonna put the cooling pump, either here or here on the rad. There really isn't anywhere to put it. Normally you'd like mount it to the rad and have it vertical here, but since I'm gonna have a video card there, you can't really do it. Uh, you can use a smaller pump and actually put it behind the wall and hide it completely, but I don't have a smaller pump and D5 pumps are pretty big. I'm actually gonna be replacing the pump with one of the Corsair pump res combos since I have it and that old EK water block version is is pretty worn out and and the acrylics all gungy and stuff so I'm gonna just uh store that and, and use it for like 
temporary use when I have to test stuff. For some insane reason, they let you use two power supplies in this for some, like, I don't know why, but you can optionally put in a second power supply, but a case is small, you're never gonna be using a second power supply. So they it comes standard with the drive rack. Now this is not hot swappable. It does let you put in a couple three and a half inch drives, which is what I'm gonna be using. There's actually a spot for a fan on that drive cage, so I'm gonna be using that. I've got a random fan to put on there. You can see it's a pretty open mesh for both power supply cooling and intakes for the rads. There's your quality of life stuff like your RGB control and power and reset. It's also USB-C and stuff at the bottom that you can move around if you want to, but I'm probably just gonna leave most of that stuff stock. There's a lot more space back here for cable runs. Not a ton, I mean, keep in mind, I'm gonna have some, an SSD and the Corsair Commanders for fan control back here. Uh, and my power supply is huge. <laughs> in fact, it's so big, I'm gonna have to double check that it'll even fit. I'm pretty sure it does, but I got a thousand watt ones hanging around here somewhere that I can swap it out with. This whole piece is removable, so you can replace that with the other bracket. I may not be able to do that partially because, not just because I may not be able to mount the upright GPU kit properly, but also because the lack of space back here may mean I don't have enough room for all the stuff. So I may need that blanked out panel just to get more space for, for stuff. So we'll see. I mean, we'll get a little creative with some of the mounting options. I've been doing some trial and error trying to figure out what will fit in this case because a lot of the time, well, pretty much every company that makes cases, they don't really specify combinations of things. They'll say like, oh, you can put a 360 millimeter rad, it can be this thick, but will it work with the upright GPU kit? Will it work if you have a rad here? Will it work if you have M.2 drive coolers sticking out? Yeah, so I've been kind of like tweaking it a little bit. So I've figured out that I can put these fans here and have them blowing against the back plate. So with the upright GPU there, I should have no problems with clearance and I can just mount the little bracket that holds this in place to the back and I can have cooling. I kind of lose space behind it. So nah, I might have to change that in the, in the end, but luckily I can change it without removing the card. And I've decided to put two um, 90 degrees here because I want to run a line up to the rad up here. And one of these will either go down here over to the CPU or something. One thing I've noticed is if I have a thick rad down here, it, well, one, it blocks one of the PCI Express slots. Not a big deal. I don't need all of the slots. I need one for the video card and one for testing things, like if I need to. So it'd just be nice to have one free. One thing that's nice about this motherboard is it has basically everything I need on it. It's got 10 gigabit ethernet, etc. I'm gonna have to change out these coolers. I do like these M.2 coolers, the little fan copper heat pipe ones partially because this this monoblock just you know the heat radiates out from it so this drive would get very hot under normal circumstances with a regular cooler so i want and the, the airflow wasn't great in my old case so i wanted active cooling so i just like made this monstrosity and just got uh, active cooling on everything but i'm going to change these out probably not all of them today because i don't have three of the same type so I'll probably just change out this one because this one clearly will not work with a fan here. So I'm going to lose the bottom PCI Express slot, this one, this um, 1X slot, and probably this one. But like I said, not a big deal. I wish case manufacturers were a little more detailed in what exactly their compatibility is with different combinations. Because it happens a lot where I just get a computer case and I'm like, oh, I, I can put a rad here and a rad here and a rad here and then you get it and you realize oh wait I can only have one installed because they interfere with each other so I wish case manufacturers just did a better job of that so I have to go back to cleaning Ugh. so yeah I have a lot of dirty fans from the old system obviously since I'm reusing parts from my old system don't expect a super clean build <laughs> especially considering I didn't want to rebuy a lot of stuff so things don't match. Uh, another note about compatibility is that this is a Hardware Labs radiator. Hardware Labs is amazing. I love their radiators, but it will not actually fit in the top slot if you have the upright GPU kit. The Corsair version will fit. The funny thing is, is who makes this? Hardware Labs. As you can see, it kind of lines up pretty well with the back of the case yeah it looks good oh the cabling with corsair fans like i said earlier these are the rgb elite fans i'm gonna need four of them 
because I also want to put one here on the back. So these ones are slightly different design and they also have half as many LEDs. There's four instead of eight in the Elite ones. And they also spin slower. So these only go up to I think 1200 RPM or 1600. These ones I think can go up to like 2000 or something. So the next thing I'm going to do is replace some of these or at least one of them and until I get more parts ordered because there is a specific cooler that I want to use for it. So I have a couple options for replacing these fans. One is my go-to option, which is a passive heat sink adapter with a heat pipe. These are really good and they can adjust. You can just like bend it just like these ones, but it's a bit narrower. Um, so it might fit a little bit better, but I think this still won't work here, especially on the bottom one. So the other option are these copper ones, which I just recently found. There's two versions. One's a thin one and a thick one. And the difference, other than the fact that one's lower and one's higher, is that uh, the orientation of the, the um, copper heatsink. This one's this way. This one's this way. I would like this one since it will be traveling upward the, the most of the airflow. Granted, the copper aesthetic isn't exactly matching in here. Like I said before, this is more of a practical build than your usual kind of boutique computer. So I'm going to go with this one on the bottom one for now. I'll order a couple more. Uh, one of the main differences, like the reason why these come in two different heights, is that if you're using this one, you can't put a GPU here. Like you can't put it here and have it and or sorry here and have a GPU hanging over it. It'll it'll interfere with it. This one's designed to be low enough that it just lines up with like the PCI Express slots. So the taller ones are better if you can uh, get away with them. In case you're wondering, these are the NVMe SSDs I'm using. I got a 970 Pro one terabyte, which I bought originally with this system. This is a XPG Gamex S50 Lite two terabyte and Samsung 980, just plain 980. The 970 I use as my Windows drive. The 980 is my Steam library. And this one is my storage for Lightroom basically, because for some stupid reason, Adobe still won't let you put Lightroom on a network share. All right, to really get the OCD going, I have three different heat sinks on. Yeah, I'm not gonna keep it that way. I am gonna replace this one. This is a really terrible heat sink. These are just like those free, like elastic ones <laughs> you just put on uh, cards. They usually come with other adapters. They're just garbage ones. And I put this passive one on. This one I'll probably keep. We'll see how much cooling this one needs with the airflow going by. This one uh, won't get much airflow uh, just cause it's gonna be like at the same level as the fans. It should be okay. Uh, these drives don't get that much work. So uh, the Windows drive is the one that really gets the majority of it. And it's also heating up from the 10 gig ethernet controller and the, uh, the monoblock. Now I'm gonna get this radiator installed along with the fans once I clean them. And uh, I'm gonna start laying out the rest of the loop. I've got the fans installed now, so you can really see just how far up this comes and it covers up most of the motherboard or at least the bottom part of it. Luckily, all the connectors down there fit. You probably you won't get away with using a really thick rad in this case if you have like USB 3.0 headers or anything down there. The USB 2.0 headers, front panel, and my TPM module all fit down there. So they clear the, the rad, but you definitely can't get away with this if you have like USB 3 or anything like that sticking out. Uh, I did notice that I can actually still technically get to the power switches on my motherboard, even though I don't really use them too often. Next thing I'm gonna do is give this another dusting because this motherboard's still covered in dust. I, I got rid of most of it, but yeah, there's still a lot of dust on it. And then I'm gonna do the GPU and probably start running power supply cables. Annoyingly, the RGB on my monoblock and on my GPU are both the standard 12 volt four wire connector. So I can't hook those up to IQ. I think there is technically a way to do it using like an Arduino or something. Probably look into that. It'd be kind of cool to do that. I just haven't yet. So no, uh, no RGB. I'll just like hide this somewhere, tuck it in here or something. Okay. It's actually been, well, weeks. 
I finished building the system. As you can see, the cable management is kind of a nightmare, and that's not really the case's fault. I know it seems like, oh my god, how many cables you gotta jam into all the crevices of the case. Keep in mind that when you're using the upright GPU kit, it's not meant to have extra fans here. This is all supposed to be closed off so that, you know, I could put my, my um, Corsair Commander over there, put all this stuff back here, and just have it on its own. Instead, I've had to leave this whole, lose all of the space and just cram everything in here. That whole cable management channel is packed. There's tons of lighting controllers because of course there's lights on everything. The power supply barely fits. I'm not sure if I really recommend the, the uh, AX1600i in this thing, but uh, it does technically fit. I put two fans on, on the drive cage. Even then, I feel like the drives are still a bit warm. You may even want to go with something other than Noctua and use a higher speed fan if you're really concerned about drive temperatures. But, it, you know, as long as the room's like a reasonable temperature, they're okay. This should be down here where it just fits. These are HDMI and DisplayPort cables going to my monitors. I used to have, uh, when, I, when I first shot the video, I also had a VR headset, HP G2, but I've decided to sell that one since I really only use my Quest 2 now. So I've actually disconnected the cables, which is no easy feat. You have to like, <laughs> if you don't want to disassemble the whole case, you have to like jam screwdrivers in and try and poke all of the cable connectors out from the top of the video card. Cause remember it's all closed up in here and the card's pointing up. It is possible to do a ton of RGB and hard drives and a huge power supply and fans back here but the cable management is no small feat. That's all I'm gonna say. It's a lot of work to get everything managed. I mean, it took a lot of iterations to figure out where to put everything. You know, I need multiple fan controllers for the RGB. I need multiple lighting controllers. In order to get this strip to work in IQ, you need, uh, I think it was included, but I also had an adapter to convert it to the same connector that IQ uses. Anyway, on the lighting node, all you do is set the strip to a 350 millimeter LED strip, and then it just works perfectly like any other light, like it was made by Corsair. Other than the cable management, I mean, I really have to say, I do really like this case. Like I have no complaints about it. Uh, they did actually just announce an XL version, but I don't have space for that. It can have a 420, a 420, and a 420. So that's a bit big. I don't have the room for that, but you know, maybe one day. And that's only in prototype phase right now at time of filming. So it'll be a long time before that actually gets to market. So this is what it looks like on the desk. Obviously there's quite a bit of glare because there's filming lights, but you get the idea. The case really came together well. I mean, I wish there was a better way to route that ugly GPU cable. There, I mean, there is. You can route it through the back if you get a long one. But even then, if you're trying to go for the super over-the-top rad, like I did, you don't really have the option of running it any other way. If you had a normal size rad or no rad at the bottom, you can loop it around the bottom and come out through the back. I still have to say the case is really good, very quiet. I'm gonna take the panels off and just kind of show a bit on the inside of the, the finished product. So one little mistake that I did make while I was building it was I had the bracket on the, on the GPU at the bottom and I didn't realize, but during installation at one point, the, the GPU actually got put in on an angle like it started to warp in so the bottom was closer to the case than the top so what happened was is when I cut the tubing I didn't realize that it was actually pushed in so when I realized the problem I actually tucked the GPU power cables behind the GPU and that like perfectly lined it up and hit the power cables I was running them a different way it seemed like it was like the only kind of clean option but this is a much better option you can see they just loop right back that not only lines up the card perfectly also hides the cable so it was great but unfortunately now these are just slightly too long so they have like a little bit of an ugly kink in them if they were just like that much shorter it would completely fix it but i really can't be bothered to drain the loop just for that so when i upgrade later this year to either am5 or raptor lake whichever one impresses me more i will uh, drain the loop because i need to replace the mono block that's on this board so whatever one i end up using that's when i drain it i'll just cut these uh who knows i may even replace the graphics card by then depending on if the ada lovelace gpus are out by then and if you can get them just as a final note before we get to the very end 
and I go through the list of all the problems I've had with this computer. I put this back together and you can see how the lighting is on on the RAM. All four sticks are lit up, I'll get to it, but there's only four sticks because eight doesn't work in this computer. The funny thing is, is that IQ sees the RAM and can change the colors and it detects the temperature. I guess it's like a serial bus that it speaks to the RAM, the, you know, like the RGB controller on it. it. That's all hooked up. But the computer doesn't see one of the sticks of RAM specifically uh, the second one from the left, it, it doesn't see it. It thinks I have 48 gigs installed. <laughs> Most likely the problem is either just a bad seat of the CPU, which happens all the time, especially with LGA 2011, they're huge chips. So not like Threadripper big, but they're pretty big chips. So it's really easy for memory channels not to all quite click on sometimes. I think what's more likely is that this particular water block just doesn't have an end stop on the screws so my guess is is the I, I just tightened the water block a bit too much so now it's actually putting too much pressure on the socket and there's no real way to get to the screws or to take the whole motherboard out it's like the one thing that i can't do maintenance on uh, easily in this and like i said it's gonna be a couple months before i replace the system so if i have 16 gigs less memory i i, I don't care I'll, I'll just live with it until uh, I replace the whole system in, a, in a, a few months. I just thought it was funny to point out that it just never ends with this system. It's just one one thing after another that, uh, you know, granted in this case, it's my fault most likely for over tightening it. Still, it's just funny how I just can't catch a break on this system. Oh, well. On to all of the problems that I've had with this system since I bought it and you be the judge. Okay, I'm going to try and remember all of the things that have gone wrong with this computer since I bought it. Well, specifically since building it. When I got it, it would not start up. Turns out the motherboard was dead. Replace the motherboard. Finally, my GPU is in stock. Get my GPU. GPU's DOA. A lot of 20 series cards were DOA. Uh, they made some manufacturing defects, whatever, when they first came out. No problem. Send it back to EVGA. They send me a replacement, which is of course refurbished, even though I just brought bought a brand new card, they send me back a refurbished one. It's DOA. I send it back to them. It's outside of my computer or outside of the box for five minutes. While I plug it in, it starts up. It says the card the card won't start, error 43 or whatever. Doesn't work. Send it back to them. They tell me a few days later that they're not going to honor the warranty because when they got it back, all the warranty seals were broken. Yeah, you know why the warranty seals were broken? Because someone sent the dead card back to EVGA and no one refurbished it or took any looks at it, didn't put on new stickers and sent it out to another customer. So I got a dead card, which they then accused me of of breaking. I argued with them. They went, oh yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you buy the card, send back a card, and then break a card for no reason? Like, why would I just start opening them up? So they sent me another card. It worked. See, I didn't have a frame of reference. I was kind of coming from a much better or much older system at the time. I think I had a GTX 980, non-TI, just the regular 1080. And it was a 3077k. This card was very fast. It worked really well. It had some oddities though. A couple times over the years, it would just like not work and it would like, I'd have to do it like a DDU and remove all the drivers and it would just say the card's broken. And I'm like, well, I should probably send it in and just get it replaced, even though it means draining the loop and all that stuff. And then it would just start working again. I also noticed it was kind of hot. Like even though it's water cooled, it would run at like 70 or 80 degrees Celsius. This is the first water cooling build I ever did. I didn't have any experience with it. So I was just figuring, oh yeah, it's just reading the silicon and you know, the, the actual thing is just being, the heat's being taken up really quickly or what, you know, whatever. I didn't really think anything of it. And then I just like one day went, you know, I should probably look into why this thing's hot. It seems like it's like not as good as it should be. There's a lot more micro stuttering and stuff in games than I had more experience. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. I take the cooler off. And of course this is the job EVGA did with thermal paste. It's like half the chip had no thermal paste on it for like three years. <laughs> so yeah, repaste the card, put it back together. Uh, I put even new thermal pads and everything. Works perfectly. It's so much faster. <laughs> And it's because I had no frame of reference for a really fast card, although now I do. I have like a 3060 and stuff, so I had like more modern cards. So thanks, EVGA. Not only do you accuse me of breaking you, your card, but you send me three defective cards. 
two of which were completely DOA. Yeah, that's just the card. So I had a water block fail. I have a mono block on the CPU. I had that fail. Three or four times when I put the whole computer together on the test bench, it would work. But then I would actually do the hardline tube and put it together. It wouldn't work. And I, it kept driving me crazy. I had no idea why it wouldn't work. Turns out when I was just building it on the test bench, I was just not putting in the Firewire card that I happened to have from my old computer for video capture. And whenever I had the Firewire card inside this, it would not boot for whatever reason. I eventually got a different Firewire card, which did work, but it caused like random instability. So I just gave up on that. The BIOS would randomly turn on and just stop at a a2 or a0 i can't remember but it was like every single windows update would cause the bios to not boot and i don't mean like it won't find the boot drive i mean it would lock up when looking for it it would just freeze on the the you know like press f2 to enter bios thing and it did this for years and years and years and i'd update the bios and it, no one it never got fixed so i was just like okay whatever i uh, the solution is to just reach at the back and hit the cmos clear luckily there's a button and i don't have to get in there and that would fix it except it wouldn't really reset the bios most of the settings were the same <laughs> it would just like reset it and like i'd have to like change one setting and that was it the memory when i initially bought the memory hang on i have it here i initially bought these sticks of corsair vengeance rgb pro they're 33 33 megahertz these are not on the qvl list or at least not for um eight slots these are 16 gigs so i had a i had a whole 128 gigs installed because you know building a crazy computer gotta have crazy memory with all those sticks installed i would have memory errors if it was on xmp switching it off xmp down to 2133 would still cause memory errors but it would work so i would i just kind of went screw it i'm not disassembling the computer again i'm just going to live with the random memory errors pretty much the only thing that would happen kind of consistently was that windows explorer when you'd like open up a page or a, a, a folder listing it would just randomly just say the memory can't be read and close the window and you'd have to open it again that was like literally the only problem that would show up and i used it for years and you just do it again and it would work so <laughs> i was just so fed up it was just, i was completely defeated by this computer that i was just like screw it i don't care so especially since i spent like 1500 dollars on the ram because i bought it like when everything was super expensive or well, ram was and I replaced it with these white ones that are on the QVL for having a full 128 gigs of RAM. They do the same thing. If you have eight sticks in there, I get memory error. So I have four sticks in there. RAM was a nightmare. I bought two complete sets of 128 gigs of RAM. And uh, yeah, I said I was gonna sell the other sets, but I ended up just throwing them in other computers except for a couple sticks. So whatever, this thing has just been a complete nightmare. And I, I yeah, I, I've been building computers for like 25 plus years and I've never had this many problems. I mean, granted some of them I could have solved, but I was just like, screw it. I'm sick of disassembling and draining these this loop for the 30th time. So I'll just live with it. Yeah, it's it's been a wild ride with this computer. And I mean, it is really quiet. It's fast. I mean, yeah, now 12th gen and Ryzen are, are Ryzen's good now and 12th gen is out. Now I could build a better just standard desktop system instead of a high-end desktop board uh, since high-end desktop kind of disappeared. There's no more Threadrippers except for the pros. You know, I do love the computer, but it's, it's, uh... It's, it's been rough. This closes the chapter on my very difficult times with this thing. It'll live on in a new case. Ollie.